So let's dive right in. Today's episode is all about wedding photography equipment, in particular cameras and lenses. I'm going to show you exactly what I use and why I use it. There's many reasons why I think this is the perfect wedding photography setup all from the picture quality right through to how small the cameras are. We're going to get into that in a wee second but let me just first tell you I've been through an absolute journey in terms of wedding photography. I've owned many cameras. I've been a Canon shooter. I am now a Sony shooter. I have been for two years. I've shot with cameras whenever you couldn't go over uh, 400, 800 ISO without your pictures looking terrible. Back then we had to use a lot of flash especially indoors, especially in ceremonies. Obviously now there's a complete difference. So I'm talking from experience. So after using all the cameras that I've had over the years now, I feel I have the perfect wedding photography set up. I'm so happy with what I have right now. I have no need to change and I'm just about to show you what that is. So first of all, let's jump right in and we'll look at the cameras first of all. So I use uh, two cameras set up on, on me at all times during a wedding. That's the Sony A9 and the Sony A7R 3 By the way, I am aware that there's new versions of these out. I've had these for two years and I continue to use these until such a time I feel I, I need to change, but they hopefully last me another two or three years. Um, so, Sony A9, it's not the largest, largest of cameras. Some people say they, they think these mirrorless cameras are too small. In general, they're all pretty much the same size. I absolutely love them. I owned a Sony A7R2 for two years and I used it loosely on weddings. I ended up selling that and just going back to the Canon full time. And then, then I got to play with the A9 at a show in London. And uh, I just, it was then I really decided, now is the time I'm going to make a switch. And uh, it was just a matter of working out what way or what system to use. The things that annoyed me before about the, the cameras was no dual card slots, 9.0. You might say, oh, the film cameras only had one roll of film. Sorry, the sun's just come out there, let me. Um, yes, you might say, the film cameras only had one roll of film. Well, that's very true, but we live in a modern world and it's better to have a backup than not. So the argument that you only need one card slot to me is just not even relevant. Now, if you believe that, just that that's fine, but and the vast majority of wedding photographers now would prefer to have a backup. So that really annoyed me about the first um, mirrorless camera that I had. That was changed, the grip was changed, along with the focusing system. Focusing system was good back then, but it's absolutely amazing now. I was so sure of you know how to focus with my Canon cameras, I barely got a missed shot, and I, I was really happy with them. But this is just another level. The, the number one thing I like about this camera is the ability of its focusing. Um, it, is, it is lightweight, easy to use. Yes, the menu system at the beginning was a bit hard to get used to, but once you get onto it, it's fine. I can tell you I had I had a harder job going from a 5D Mark II, or three, can't remember, to a 1DX whenever I was back with Canon. Um, don't ask me why, I think it was just a different setup. It took me longer to get used to that setup than it did jumping over from Canon over to Sony. I just fell in love with photography all over again. Not that I had fallen out of love with it, but it just gave me that boost inside to get back out shooting. And see, to be honest, I've been feeling like that ever since. I absolutely love shooting with these cameras. So first of all, it's the, the focus, the, the easiness of it to use. And um, the A9 has the extra dial on top. Um, so that you can shoot between the different different modes. You can customize this camera to any any way, shape, or form that you want. Not all the buttons around it can be customized exactly how you need them. Another great thing about this is the eye focus. Now I know the other models have that too. Um, this look the speed of this, the quality of looking through the back of the screen, everything is just unbelievable. Like it's just a joy to shoot with. I have my camera customized. Uh, they suit me. Every button's got a different purpose. Uh, ISO, uh, reviewing images. I have the C3 button programmed. Whenever I press that, the the sensor will crop in times three. So I, I in effect, get closer to uh, the couple. Now, here's the thing. I only use that in a couple of points of the wedding. I would use that in the ceremony and I would use that in the speeches. And I'll, I'll explain a wee bit more about that later. So one of the most amazing things about this camera is obviously 
the, the speed of it, this shoots at 20 frames a second. Honestly, I don't need that. But the other features of it just weigh out everything else uh, of me buying the likes of an A7 III. I just absolutely love this camera and I couldn't do without it. This is my go-to camera. This is what I shoot 90% of a wedding with. It's on me at all times. It's so fast. It's so reliable. I have shot probably 100 weddings over the last uh, two years with it. And um, it's just been... Uh, it hasn't let me down once. Dynamic range is a big talk nowadays. It's, you know, everybody wants great dynamic range. Honestly, I don't know if you need any better than what's on this camera. That is absolutely amazing and it's perfect. I remember saying to one of the Sony guys at a show not so long ago, like, what is Sony going to do? What are they going to bring out? I feel that they can't get much better. You can, dra you can drag out the shadows and the blacks in these cameras so far. Um, you can completely change the look, look of your image. And to me, that is just incredible. I don't know how, how much better. Obviously, they will. These companies are so in innovative. And um, they obviously will have loads of things up their sleeves. So, in terms of a wedding photography camera, I believe this camera is the most perfect camera out there. The Sony A9. I know there's an A9 II, but this is the one I have. Obviously, the A9 II is going to be uh, slightly better. This is, to me, this is all you need. If you can afford to buy the, the Mark II version, go ahead and do that. This is absolutely perfect. Get it bought, get shooting weddings with it and you will not be disappointed. The second camera I use is an A7R3. The reason for having these two is my A9 is my go-to camera. I shoot in a, quite a documentary style most of the day and that is the perfect camera for that. Whenever I'm shooting the portraits, on the wedding day, these are the pictures that are more likely to be blown up by clients and put onto their wall. So I use the A7R3 for the more signature shots that I would do whenever I use flash and whatnot. This camera um, is just incredible as well. The image quality is unreal. It really is. The there's there's things about it I don't like in terms of the the speed and things with the A9 has, but for the purpose of it. Bear in mind that the purpose of this camera is slightly different. I would use this for any commercial work and that, whereas I wouldn't really use the A9. The file sizes are a lot bigger than this. The dynamic range is better than this. It has all the main features that the A9 has. It's just larger, larger file size, better image quality in a sense, and um, you know it's just it's just incredible for that sort of thing. So that's the reason why I have them two cameras. They are uh, very different but very similar, and I know that seems a bit odd, but I'm Northern Irish and that's the sort of stuff we come out with. So, um, very different, but very similar. But just remember that. So, um, in terms of lenses then, do I know something? I have shot so many different lens combinations over the years. I have shot with, you know, 20, 40, 70s. I've shot with prime only. I've shot wide angle a good lot of the wedding. I've shot with a 20, uh, 20, 40, 70. Um, with three stages where I shot with a 70 to 200 most of the day. I don't ask me how I done that, but I did. Um, that was quite a few number of years ago, and I think I done that after watching some photographers uh, online do it. Just back a few years ago, I shot prime only 35 millimeter and uh, 50 millimeter lenses. I shot with them quite a lot. Um, for nearly two years, then I shot with a 20 40 70 and a 16 to 35. The 16 to 35 probably took about 20 to 50 shots per wedding whereas the remainder of all the wedding photography was done with the 204070 do you know i think the reason for that was is well number one i was trying to interact with my couples more rather than think about changing lenses and whatnot i was you know able to change the focal length i was able to change the focal length at any point in time which is great obviously the only thing about that is consistency consistency and the focal length and the work can be seen in the album at the finished product now the other the other thing that annoyed me a wee bit was i didn't have the fast i had a 2.8 lens and it wasn't just as fast as some of the primes for the last while i have been shooting with prime lenses again i have a, a wedding lens set up which is completely perfect i don't carry all the lenses with me the whole day i chop and change as less as possible but I have it working pretty well so that I can not be running around with loads of lenses on me, pretty close to me whenever I need them. So, 
Really what I do is I keep two lenses on my camera probably 80% of the day and that is the 55 1.8 Sony lens and the 35 1.8 Sony lens. Now these are the less expensive versions of the prime lenses coming from Sony. Do you know I, I've owned £2,000 prime lenses and I've owned £500 prime lenses. I absolutely love these lenses. 1.8 f 1.8 lenses and they are absolutely amazing don't get me wrong if you want a pixel peep if you want to go into the corners of images zoomed in at 500 percent and, and pick out differences in lenses you are perfectly willing to do that i have never ever and shooting over 500 weddings had one customer come and say that the corners of the image weren't sharp or whatnot that's not to say they won't be in these images i'm just telling you this video is not about pixel peeping this video is about telling you these lenses are amazing for the price the quality is unreal they are so affordable they are built well and they will last you in weddings they will do you all you need so if you're thinking about getting some prime lenses for wedding photography especially if you just want to try them out and you have a sony camera get the 1.8 versions 100 percent if you end up wanting to upgrade to the more expensive ones, that's fine. If you, especially if you're on a budget, just buy these lenses. These are unreal. They are so good. So these are the lenses that I have on my camera most of the time. They are my go-to lenses in terms of focal length. Obviously, sometimes you will need to go further, uh, a, a closer focal length. And, and sometimes you will need to get wider. I also have the 85mm 1.8 lens. Again, very similar to the other ones. These are really, really good. I have, I've owned this for a while now. And see, to be honest, I only use this lens a couple of points throughout the day. I would use this lens during the ceremony. I would use this lens during the speeches. And uh, in fact, sorry, the ceremony, I only use it if we're in a, a larger church or a larger venue. Um, some ceremonies, I, I stick to the 55. In fact, I would say probably most I stick to the 55. Um, a lot of the time in the speeches, I will use the, the 35 and 55 or this lens. More or less all the time with speeches, I am using the 85mm. And also for some of the portraits during the day, I will use these. Uh, this to get uh, in close to a bride or a groom and to get some nice close-up portraits of them. Um, do you know, that's probably a vast majority of my weddings. I've got two other lenses which in the past I used a lot. Number one, it's the, the wide angle lens. To me, this is, you know, you need to keep one of these in your bag. You will need a wide angle lens at some point if you're a wedding photographer. I have been caught out a couple of times over the years when I didn't have this lens close to me. Um, I remember one time, I remember one time in a ceremony, I was asked to do a group shot from the pulpit and I had the 2047 in my bag, but not this. And I just couldn't get wide enough. I ended up having to take two shots, one from this angle and then the, the, the other slit from the other side and stitch them together in Photoshop. And you know what? That was 30 minutes work I should not have had to do. Had to do. At the end of the day, if I had had a wide angle, I would have been able to shoot it. Another way I use the wide angle shots is for some of my signature shots that I would use with flash and things. If I'm getting the whole scenery of the hotel in, I would use them uh, for that as well. But again, I might use this on some weddings. I don't use it at all but I might use it for a number of shots. But I have the f4 version of that lens. I would never shoot a wide angle lens at f2.8, so there's no point in me spending money on that. The other Sony lens that I have, which is a lens probably, in, a, in terms of quality, it's probably the best lens I have ever owned. This is the 2047A 2.8 GM Sony lens. Now this is incredible. I know I've said that the other lens are incredible. They really are. But in terms of image quality, if you're wanting to pixel peep, this is the one to pixel peep on. This is an amazing lens. It's very versatile. Obviously, the 2047A focal length, um, you know, you can shoot whole weddings with this. 100% It's a great job. I don't use this as much anymore simply because I'm just going through a phase where I'm loving the primes. I would use the 2047A loads on the dance floor. And for the simple reason, I, if I need to zoom in on a bride and a groom or a father of a bride or whatever it happens to be in and close to them I can do that but I can also get that wide shot and show the band or the DJ in the background as well so another amazing lens 
The other lens that I have that I take out in weddings with me is a different brand. This is the Lens Baby Velvet 56mm. The reason I take this is sometimes I would do like creative portraits with it as a very velvet -y soft feel. Um, but also it serves as a macro lens. Now you can take shots with a 20-40-70. In fact I used to do that all the time. I used to use my 20-40-70 for all macro shots. You just can't get that close. If I need to get closer, especially for wedding rings and stuff, I will quite often use this. It's a manual focus lens, which, you know, you use manual focus and close-ups pretty much all the time anyway. And, and macros, I mean. Um, but it's also a very good lens for doing portraits and giving your client something different. I do have a number of other lens baby lenses. This would be the main one that I would use on a wedding day. So, enough of lenses to talk for now. Sorry, the only... So the only other thing I wanted to talk about is you might be saying to yourself why do you not have a focal length longer than 85mm? Well the simple reason for that is I don't need it. I haven't shot any longer than 85mm in a couple of years. In fact I that's kind of a lie I have. What happens is I use the 85mm lens and I use the crop feature in the Sony cameras, I, can, I have my C3 button tuned, as I mentioned before, whenever I press it um, to, to crop and the sensor. And in fact, I get from 85mm, do you know what, I don't even know exactly what it is, 110, 120mm just by pressing that button. Yes, I'm going into the actual file, I understand that, but I only use it in times that I don't really need to print large, and that would be in the ceremony, or if I'm uh, shooting the speeches, then there are always small photographs in the album anyway, so I don't worry so much about that. So that's the reason why I don't need any longer than an 85mm lens. As I said before, I used to shoot with 20-40-70 and a 70-200. The 70-200 I had on my camera all the time, gear hanging off me everywhere, and I was way down. Now, on the majority of a wedding, I have these two cameras with those two lenses on me. I, I know whenever I go into, the, into a church that I need to bring my bag and a couple of extra lenses and leave it sitting somewhere that's easy access. I know that if I'm going into the speeches that I need to bring the 85 with me. I know if I'm doing the portraits I can bring a bag with a couple of different lenses in it and leave it uh, at my side and use it whenever need be. My wedding photography is all about getting natural moments as well as doing the portrait sessions and getting some shots that are kind of more of what I would call my signature style. Now, very quickly, I'll just talk about what the other stuff I have in my camera bag. Obviously, I use quite a lot of flash, and I'm, going, I'm just about to do another video on that flash, and I'll show you what the differences is in, in different flashes and how to use them quite easily. But the only other equipment that I would carry with me on a wedding day, I don't have an assistant, I just carry this all myself. As I said, I know when to bring it and when not to. In terms of an LED, I use this one. It's one from Forex, and it's a great job. I think the battery's actually done in this right now. The battery lasts quite a long time. You can change the color temperature in this up and down. As you can see there, you can change the color temperature and you can change the power. I'll probably go off here. That's the color temperature change in there. It is a really good job. Um, I use that quite a lot, especially in the bride's house in the morning. So I keep that on with me. You can put that onto a light stand or I have it just slipped into the back of my small bag, um, which is a great job. In terms of flash, I have an under 500, which is quite a large flash from Photix. I've had it since 2015 or something. It's quite a good job. To be honest, it stays in the car. I use that for more portrait and commercial stuff. What I use in most of my weddings in terms of flash is this setup, which slips into my bag and isn't particularly heavy. I use the Photix Juno Flash along with the Odin 2 transmitter. These are both very reliable and I use these quite religiously on weddings. I also use the Mag Magmod system on the Flash but we'll get into that in a different video. So there you are, just to recap, my to me the, the best cameras out there for the money, especially now you can get these cameras uh, at less money because the new versions are out, are the Sony A9 and the Sony A7R 3 that's a perfect setup for me. Lenses, it's the 35, 55 and 85 1.8 primes from Sony. Great lenses. I have a 16 to 
35, the 2470 for kind of more general work wide angle and the more the zoom. The, I have the 16 to 35 and the 204070 as zoom lenses for whenever I need that wider angle or for the dance floor and stuff. And I also have the lens baby 56 manual focus lens for the creative stuff and for the macro stuff on a wedding day. So that's it, I think we've wrapped up for the day. If you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I would just ask you, please subscribe to my channel. I've got really good stuff coming. I'm going to be videoing more stuff on lockdown. The next video I'm going to put up will be on flash and some simple ways to use that. Um, thank you very much once again. Please subscribe, comment, like this video, share it to your friends. Thanks very much. Stay safe in this lockdown period. And all the best. See you later. Bye-bye. Oh.